window computer rather than an Apple computer. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, when it stopped, it stopped on me, and then you have to unplug the battery and then replug it. You can reboot the entire computer, and then it was stuck. <laughs> so, uh, and you know, I see the sign, move to the shoulder, move to the side. Like the engine just died, and there's this voice telling me to go to the side. <laughs> But we have other, other, we're testing the Volt right now, collaboration with Epic, we're testing recently. Uh, we're, you know, what else does the I do we have? Uh, school, bus. school buses, hybrid, plug-in hybrid school buses. I know we're testing it here in Schenectady. You know, so we have diesel, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, the same routes. A lot of these things with all the electronics right now, one of the downsides of the real testing is, is they have all kinds of electronics. They know exactly what I'm doing and where I'm going. <laughs> we just talk about Big Brother. They have every, every kind of data acquisition <laughs> that they've written. Um, solar. We've been doing solar for a long time. Guy, when did you, when did NICA start? Early 90s. Early 90s. We have been installing <laughs> solar in public, largely in public buildings, in public facilities. Again, to test the technology, to see what works, see what doesn't work. So we're, we're, we're always thinking about doing that. We've done a lot of installation. The most recent large one was in University of Buffalo, ground mounted, uh, just under a megawatt. It should have been a megawatt, but the, the architects and the, uh, the consultants one of the largest installations in a <coughs> university setting in, in New York State. And so now we, we're monitoring it, we're figuring out uh, you know, what are, again, what works, what doesn't work, especially in, a, in an area like Buffalo, which is where there's just no sun. So it actually, contrary to everybody's belief, it's one of the more sunny. 16 May and October. 16 May and October. <laughs> <laughs> well, sunny places in New York State. So we'll see how that how that works out. And the, the growth really has been <coughs> just New York, but if you if you look across the country, the growth has been tremendous lately in new technology, especially solar. And I get a little uh, uh, you know when people say. almost all of the northeast states, you combine them all, it's pretty much equivalent to what we've done here in New York or the Washington Bay. Somehow we get isolated only on a particular technology like solar. And, and I think you know, that, that's one way to, you know, and a more appropriate uh, evaluation really is, you know, an electron is an electron. We, we, we need to increase renewable electrons and actually New York State has done really well in that area. Tremendous growth. <coughs> New York City, same thing, tremendous growth. People think, I used to work uh, for the mayor uh, in, in New York City, and it's not easy to put solar in New York City. You all know, many of you probably do projects in New York City, uh, but to really work on you know, the mayor's office or CUNY, They've done extremely well in removing what I would call the, the frictions. Uh, and, and many of them are unique to New York City because of just the way New York City is. And doing a really great job in, in sort of accelerating installations in New York City. 
So some of the, the creative initiatives, you know, you have the property tax abatement, uh, the governor is expected to, to sign some legislation to help that even further. Tom mentioned Long Island permitting. This is one area where in our solar market acceleration program, we're going to work with ISOVA and LIPA to see how can we standardize permitting. I wish we could do Vermont. I know I heard Vermont should have a 10-day permit. <laughs> I don't know whether that's possible here, but anything is possible in Vermont. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, and then in the New York cities, again, many tools, empowerment zones, very creative. And, and our goal, really, from a state perspective, is when we find best practices in other areas, our first question is, can that be pushed out to other localities? And how quickly can we do that? And then that's what, what Tom and Bob Holland always ask us to think about by the end of the year. So, solar map. Uh, our board recently approved a $30 million program. Uh, we will have a, a collaboration with NYSERDA that will bump that you know, another $10 million on top of that. And the goal, again, is to reduce balance of system costs, including soft costs. So permitting is one, interconnection, uh, racking systems, you know, everything aside from the panel itself. What are those components and, what, and how can we reduce the cost of those? So if you think of a pie chart of what are the various cost items solar, you, you know, take out the, the uh, cost of the panel itself, every other slide you're going to look at in partnership with NYSERDA, in partnership with EPRI, and the federal government, you know, ARPA, EUA, NREL, DOE, to make sure that we find a way to squeeze as many of the cost slices in that pie. And uh, we are in the process of developing that program now again to make the installation easier, to make the cost a lot lower, and making solar more, more cost effective going forward as the technology improves over time. So again, you know, the changes, I've always said in the past that solar needed a technology breakthrough before it's going to make sense. It is happening very, very quickly. It's the same thing with batteries. You know, it's, it's <coughs> innovation is happening very quickly. Um, and, and batteries and solar are kind of the same. You know, batteries are learning from the solar <coughs> EV world. Batteries are now thinking about balance of systems. How do they reduce balance of systems and not just the battery itself? If you look at your iPad, I have one here. There's my iPad somewhere. But the iPad 2 to the <laughs> iPad 3, for example, in this battery, it's this, the iPad 3, they don't call it iPad 3, by the way, <laughs> the new iPad. Um, it's the same physical size, better graphics, and twice the battery capacity. So you can just see the innovation in batteries iPad 2 to the current iPad, same price point. So my, my belief is I think a lot of innovation in battery can happen in, uh, in electronic devices that will then translate to cars and then cars to the grid. In solar, that kind of innovation is also happening now. Uh, new technologies driving down the cost, institutions like this, Pradeep's uh, work with, uh, with ARPA-E, with Sunshot, uh, and many others across the country, again, will drive this technology uh, and, and will, again, make it more cost-effective and, and deploy it more widely across the board. So our job now is to make sure that we're not overly reliant on incentives, 
try to reduce the cost, to try to reduce the friction cost in doing this, and collaboration is the key. Collaboration amongst utilities, collaboration amongst state agencies and authorities, collaboration amongst industry and industry players. That's what's gonna make this uh, a viable technology sooner than later. I'm very, very optimistic with solar, uh, more optimistic than probably in a, you know, a year, just a year ago. I think I've made presentations in the past where I've always said that solar is not gonna happen as quickly. It needs a technological breakthrough before installations are going to occur. So when I look at the growth rate of installations across not just New York, but across the United States and across the world, I, I'm very optimistic where solar is headed, especially when it becomes fully integrated with the grid. Having all the other benefits.